one thing I wanted to ask you specifically, uh, referring to the good old days, how, because I never got a chance to meet him. I never got a chance to get to know him, but how good of a drummer and person was Bobby Lloyd Hicks? Hmm. You went right to the sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured you'd have some perspective on him. I have I have searched videos of him. I've seen some stuff of him doing interviews and doing all kinds of things. I've watched him play on video. I've never I never got to meet him. He was hmm. gone before I had a chance to really get. If 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 I was doing what we're doing now, and he was still here, we'd have him on for sure. By God, I would have loved if, to have talked to him. If I knew that you hadn't met him and he was still here, I would take you to him and introduce you. To yeah, him right now. Yeah, right yeah. Now. We would stop the show. <laughs> right, right. Good night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it seems like that dude Bobby was, was pretty freak. cool like, as Bobby hell. was a freak. Like, you know, I, I talk about really good musicians as being like aliens. Mm-hmm. You know, like this guy's not real. Right. You're right. that way on the piano, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> and I, no, right. Fucking okay. humility and okay. all the fucking humble bullshit. You're no, an, I'm arrogant as fuck. I know you're you fine. are, but sometimes you pull the card on me. And the, sometimes uh, you pretend. <laughs> Pretending I suck at piano. <laughs> Let me play you this shit. Anyway, Bobby. Anyway, so Bobby, um, how good's Bobby? Bobby was the kind of human being that could listen to music and then go, give me a second, and go over there and with a pencil, write out a staff. Really? Write all the shit. And then hand it to you and say, here's your piano part. Wow. Oh, you need to know your vocal part? Can you you read the notes? Or you need to know the guitar lick? And he'd write, he could write it all out. He was super freak show talented up here. Hmm. Um, Bobby, as a drummer, was he's like one of the greatest drummers ever. And it wasn't because he had all the hot licks. He knew how to drive the train. He knew that this less was more. He knew to give the pianist the piano, give the vocalist the vocal, give the guitar player the solo. Um, Bobby. He was very smooth. Very laid back. Never yeah. Russian. Now, the neat thing about Bobby and why I like Bobby is because I've known Bobby my whole life. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I've known Bobby through good Bobby, bad Bobby, young Bobby, old Bobby, crazy Bobby, mellow Bobby. Um, my whole life, I <laughs> wanted to be one of two drummers Steve Zins, who's still alive and lives up in Wisconsin, mm-hmm. or Bobby Lloyd Hicks. Yeah. I mean, like, that's what I wanted to be. Yeah. You you play piano? I'm going to be like Dan. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not around with you. Right. I want to be like you. Mm-hmm. And I, I never uh, have been talented enough to take the notes and do all the scoring and write out charts and be able to give the whole band yeah. their chart and in a recording studio and just, like, so efficient and so effective. <clears throat> and harmony sing harmony like crazy, sang lead from the drums every now and again, um, played a four-piece kit, um, the same four-piece kit. He knew about tone. Yeah. Tone. Because. What's the 45 that we have? Gas Monkey. We got Gas Monkey. We got Trans Am. He put a That's few Bobby, of them out. That, just him. Just Bobby. Yeah. Lee I found one on nice. eBay. I, I almost bought it. Don't. I, don't. <laughs> you got some. I got you. <laughs> Rewind records right Stop here. That yeah. shit. Um, <laughs> He, and he did a lot, of, you know, and I think he played, I don't have the numbers right, but it's like f- over 50 bands. Mm-hmm. Like it was probably 70 something bands. In Does his that life. count and these are, or not count the recordings that he worked on at the studio? Because he was like always the house drummer there too, right? Did, so, did not count that. Does not count that. Does yeah. not count studio right. time. Right, right. Studio time, you're a working musician, you play for everybody in the sun. Yeah. yeah. And he played for everybody in the sun. I can remember in the 70s. Okay, so that Just For You album that my dad put out in the 70s, that white album with his picture on it. Yeah. Well, Bobby Little Hicks was the drummer. And by this time, I'm probably five, six, seven, because it's 75, 76, 77. I'm old enough to understand. And I'd got my first drum set when I was like maybe six or seven. And that's the real drum set from the drum key and the yeah. Adele Boys, you know, and yeah. all that. Yeah. Um, Bobby was playing drums, recording at the studio for my dad's album, and they'd bring that music home. And you know how making an album is, you're just torturing yourselves listening to the music yeah. over and over and over and over. Right, and over. Right. You get so well, sick this, of it. Yeah. There, was this, <laughs> right. there was this sound. 
Yeah. And they yeah. were like, what the fuck is this sound? Yeah. And it was Bobby's feet. And Bobby's feet were so fast that he was trying to put this little, just this little, just a little. On the of, kick? Yeah, on the kick. Yeah. 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 And he might have even been kind of doing a heel toe kind of thing. But in his alien freak show mind, <laughs> this, this, this moment, this music, this sound, this sound needed this tone and this rhythm. Mm-hmm. Bobby was a guy that would teach or that has taught me about the, the tone of drums, the tone. Yeah. Not whether they're in tune. How to tune. And See, right. the tuning and tone is two different things. Right, right. The touch of how you touch a drum, and it's it makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. And it's 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 about all those T's, you know, mm-hmm. timbre, and there's all kinds of crazy <laughs> timbre, tune, tone. <laughs> but there's a difference, you know. There's really yeah. and, the, and the tones that you pull out of your drums by the way you touch your drums. And Bobby was that guy. Yeah. He, he was just a he was a genius. He was just so good. Yeah. Um, I literally, my mom knows I loved him so much that I have his hand. You know, when you go to Silver Dollar City and you stick your hand in the wax. Oh yeah. yeah. And you pull your hand out. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have that. In our I have That's... that. I have that in the pinball room. His oh, room. Awesome. Yeah, it's it wasn't Bobby original. Lloyd of Bobby's hands. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's cool. Well, saddest, and I would imagine. Go ahead. The saddest time with me and Bobby's life together was, and I remember I'll never freaking forget. Uh, Bobby was late in his day. And he was carrying the oxygen bottle when he went out. Mm. And he had the thing in his nose. And, and, and his wife would bring him out. And, and uh, every time I saw Bobby, though, Danny, and t- I would say, man, I just want to be like you. I just want to be like you. Yeah. I just want to be like, yo, you sound good tonight, man. Bobby. <laughs> and then one night at Lindbergh's, he said, uh, I think you can be now. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Mm. Oh, man. And it wasn't long. Oh, and man. And boom, he's gone. And I'm like, and when he told me that, I was like, oh, no, no, wait a minute. You know, but like he literally, we were, I love Bobby so much. Yeah. I, so I he, figured. And he was, he was good. He, he played with big boys. You know, the NRBQ, that was probably one of his favorite projects to play with. But yeah. Um, Would you say if I go see Papa Green Shoes? This kind of goes without saying, but I'm just kind of being a little gratuitous here. There's a little bit of Bobby being kind of, um, what do you say, channeled I play through the way you kid. play. Yeah, I play a four piece kid. I yeah. love that. I play a four piece because I caught a video of him. I, I caught a video of him playing live somewhere on YouTube, and he was wild. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he came out from behind the kit and was standing on top of guitar mm-hmm. amps and doing crazy shit, and I'm like. That was when I made the first connection. Like I, I knew it was pretty obvious that you must have known him and and probably even looked up to him. But when I when I saw him come out from the kit in this weird, it might have been at Lindbergh's. He's an entertainer. Yeah, he was all over the whole stage, just being wild. And mm-hmm. I was like, that looks like Jody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that was that was my first thought, yeah. which is when I was just kind of like, oh well, of course, there's there's got to be a pretty tight connection there, you know. Bobby and. Uh, yeah, and I steal everything. You know, mm-hmm. well, dad, yeah. told, dad told me that early. We all do that. You steal it. You see something you like. We all do that. But Take you, it. you do steal realize it. that so did Bobby. Oh yeah. And no, it, there's we people. Are too there's many people life that generations and lifetimes ahead of the beginning too. Sure, but there's there's people in this life that see you in the exact same way you saw him. Mm. You do realize that. Mm. That'd be cool. Do you now, realize I, that? I, I guarantee I think it would you. Be cool. I guarantee you. Yeah, no, that, I guarantee. That, you. I'm one of them. Well, yeah. I, when when I watch you play, you 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 have that same kind of quarterbacking of the entire band, and and I always go back to the tone and the hitting and the passion and the there's all these weird little dynamics. Things, the dynamics. There's all these weird little things that you absolutely are as a drummer that that I can't even have this conversation with a lot of other drummers. Or any musicians who just, because that was another thing I was thinking about talking about tonight, and you've already brought it up, tone. Tone has always been something you've brought up almost every conversation we've it's had. It's really important. Tone, 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 tone. It's yeah. really important. I, I, when, I was in, when I was in Johnny Q Public, our producer actually came to Springfield, Missouri, and he spent about six hours with us in the rehearsal room tuning the band, mm-hmm. not tune the guitar, tune the drums. No, no, I get it. He tuned tune the band. The band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he would spend an hour or more on just one, our rhythm guitar players, guitar rig. I mean, it was, yes. it was this and listen and this 
and listen and whether it goes this. with the kick do this stuff. and whether it goes with the bass and yeah. whether it was tuning the band yes and that's it, important it was an amazing experience and it's a it's wild how you can hear it so differently i think fool's face is good at it yeah like i had tried to you know explain this story to tara a hundred times when our producer came up and tuned our band i was like you you just i don't know how to explain it but it's just different and so we would talk and talk and talk. And we're trying to get it. And then we went to a, one of those Fool's Face reunion shows of cartoons. And right when we walked in, even she was like, and I turned around. I was like, that's what I was talking about. I was like, about. what is happening right now? They I, sounded like a fucking CD. I hadn't um, heard a band like that. It, it wasn't like, bless the sound person and the sound system. That was great. That's not what I'm talking it about. It wasn't that. It wasn't the sound system. It's the attack. I was yeah. just going, it's the oh, attack. wow, there's something yeah. happening here that I haven't heard in a long time. The yeah. Papa Green Shoes group, that's that's what, that, I mean, if I if it all falls apart tomorrow, yeah. the neatest thing about the Papa Green Shoes experience for me is that we all understand tone. Yep. Yeah. And we all understand the blending of such. Certainly. And we all understand to mix from the inside out. Yeah. Which first, yeah. like, we're, there's four of us, so you got to be able to hear at least three of us. <laughs> and that means you might not hear yourself because you're confident enough to play your piano or play your guitar or play your bass or play your drums. Yeah. But you better be listening. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, every player listens to themselves first. So that's a given. So yeah. If you, you have to listen to all four people. We, we do a thing that's mixing from the inside out. And that goes to play into the room. I mean, one of our favorite rooms in the world to ever play, and this was back in the Cotton Gim Band days, was Virgil's. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I think we talked about this. Yeah, on probably I think did. so. And yeah. that's still true because the room was so brittle mm -hmm. that it gave you a chance to play to the room. Nice. And then yeah. when you get to play your instrument to the room instead of to the people and you're playing for the music, you're in the middle of happiness. Yeah. I mean, it's just like fun. Well, fun, it's fun, interesting fun. too how some bands who just, they don't have this kind of uh, awareness or enlightenment because it really is an enlightenment. And it was forced upon me through... It took lots of years of people cussing me out. Yeah. And Old it, guys. And all for the, me, all it the was, heavy heads. For all me, the Bud Johnsons and Huapos and Pauls and, and yeah. Big Vons and the, all the freaking people that I've ever played with my whole life. The Donnie Snows and the Lou Davisons and all the people. And they're just looking at me like, would you quit? Would you stop? You knew Lou? You don't need to very well. I spent... You was, knew Lou I Davison? was 17 years old. Me, Donnie, and Lou were on the road together. <coughs> Lou was cool. <clears throat> uh, yeah but they would beat me up you know really beat me up and it, after a while you, you you stop bucking the system as a young buck thinking you know everything right right i'm johnny rockstar i live in the 80s right you? right you don't know tommy d right, no, but, <laughs> right, right. but they knew music yeah right. uh, the one liner that stoney and i use all the time and it came from lou whitney was would a blind guy dig it yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's so good that's it's huge. So true. Everyone to it's this day. It's probably in that book, The Louisms. <laughs> would a blind it should guy be. dig it? Yeah. Back, back like there. you can do all the suka tiki and you can run around, Bobby, and you yep. can play yep. the guitar behind you. You set the bitch on fire. You can do whatever. You can you right. Know, right. play front person. And it's just it's when you get to that point where you can hear it, it's it's and Papa Green Shoes has it. And like I say, uh Fool's Face had it. Um it's it's just so selfish, different and it's amazing. It's what's kind of funny. I think about it is it's a musician's thing. Yeah. Like a musician can come in and hear the tone of Papa Green Shoes and be like, Oh, I get it. But like fans, they probably don't, no. they probably Most don't like, recognize no. it Could quite as much. Something me and my girlfriends know. Right. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. But if you hear it, you can then feel it. Yes. But when but you, as soon but, as you can hear it, then you have the opportunity to feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when people are feeding you, that's why I feel so thankful to be with the boys I'm with now. Yeah. Because Casey, what he does, I feel. What what Dean does, even though he's smooth as glass and not real fancy pants, and he's not boop doop 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 yeah. all damn time. Yeah. Um, now, Stoney's tone is, is like impeccable. Yeah. 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 His line was, uh, after Tripwire, his line was, I get to play what I've been wanting to hear for a long time. Nice. <laughs> right. Yes. And that goes back to tone. Yeah. yeah, I love sometimes that <coughs> Stoney's rig is like a little ten inch. Every time, 
Yeah, it's a, <laughs> super it's a, tiny. It's a, a Victrola uh, record player with the top and the record player ripped off of it. Yeah. The speaker that was in the back of The speaker of it. in the tubes used to have the big from the v original. Yeah, yep, dad yep. built that. Dad built that. <laughs> yeah. He just, you know. And somebody wood screwed it together, and somebody who's just put not, a JBL who's speaker not that been he thought in, was killer in it, and someone who's not been enlightened. They walk in like, "What the hell is he playing?" Yeah. Stupid. And it's like yeah. I walk in going, "That is ex- <laughs> exactly right." It's so <laughs> sounds so good. Yeah. I and love he, it. He, right. he, he pays attention. Tune in live every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central. On the Unsung Screamers Facebook page, YouTube channel, and Twitter. And check out our Unsung Screamers podcast. Wherever you get your podcasts. Uh